What's up you goons, it's Jacob here, and today I wanna to talk to you guys about what I find to be key workouts in developing myself as a runner and becoming a faster, stronger runner. All right guys, so the first work key workout I will mention in becoming a faster runner is tempo or lactate threshold workouts. Um, so uh, I will explain what this is after in a minute, but um, pacing wise, this should be right around a minute slower than what you think your mile pace could be. So take your mile PR or whatever you think you could run it around and add a minute to that. So for me, that would be, I think I could probably run low 420s in, in a, at a really good level of fitness, maybe even a little faster. So uh, that would mean that my tempo pace would be 520 per mile. Um, and generally speaking, the duration in which you should run these tempo workouts is 20 to 30 minutes in length. Um, so for me, I could almost squeeze in six miles of tempo work to, um, if I wanted to, because I, I can get up to 30 minutes at my 520 per mile pace. Um, uh, so what is lactate threshold? What does this mean? Um, generally speaking, when you are running at your lactate threshold pace, your body is producing lactate at the same speed by which it clears the lactate from, from your bloodstream. So by doing these types of workouts on a regular basis, you're training your body to get better at clearing this lactate from your body. Um, and evidently the, the lactate is the uh, substance which results in the burning sensation you feel towards the end of a hard effort. Um, which usually a race setting is where you'll really start to feel lactate coming in. Um, so this just allows you to, uh, you know, move back uh, this burning sensation farther out in the race. So if you keep doing these types of workouts, it's going to take longer for you in a race setting or hard effort setting to to really start to feel that burn, which then leads to slower pacing and, um, and burnout eventually. So that that's one of the key benefits of doing these tempo workouts is that you're you're improving your lactate threshold so that you can last longer at a fast pace. Um, and because it's a faster pace for a longer period of time, it's really great for building both your speed and endurance, um, which makes it a very versatile workout. Um, and that is one reason why I love it so much. Know knowing that gives me so much confidence um, going to a race uh, because I just know that I can hold a, a pretty hard pace for a sustained, uh, somewhat long sustained period of time. Um, so that's one of the main reasons I like it. Also, may, may I note that at the end of a training block, um, I typically like to go a little bit past that 20 to 30 minute um, period of time that they recommend. So I'll, I'll do close to an eight mile tempo towards the end of a training block, like, like what I did for Glass City Marathon training. Um, I put, I'll put it on the screen, but I did an eight mile tempo at that 5.30 pace. Um, and uh, yeah, just obviously is going over the 30 minute duration, but it gives me a lot of confidence now I can hold a pace for that long. Um, and, and I ended up doing uh, really well in the March Madness 10 miler as a result, which was my tune-up race for the marathon. So that is the first workout I will uh, recommend to you guys. I think it's essential in becoming a faster runner. Um, and having said that guys, let's move on to the second type of workout I find essential. and. That second workout, guys, is mile repeats. And specifically, I would say do uh, upwards of four to six mile repeats. Maybe um, in the beginning, towards the earlier stages of a training block, you could do maybe closer to three mile repeats and then throw some 200s on the end. Um, but once you're really getting into things, it's good to get try to shoot for that four to six range. Um, five is great. Five is really good if you can get that much. But um, with regards to pacing for these, you're gonna wanna do these probably close to your 5K pace, um, maybe a little bit slower. So for me, that's right around five minutes per mile. Um, so I usually like to start my mile repeats. Say I do five mile repeats. I'll do my first one a little bit slower than that mile pace at around 510. Then I'll drop by five seconds until by the end I'm hitting 450. So I go 510, 505, 5, 455, 450. Um, so I, I kind of like to do mile repeats in that way where I'm I'm starting faster than or uh, slower than my uh, 5k race pace and I'm building to pass that to where I'm going faster than my race pace which gives me a lot of confidence going into a shorter event like the 5k or the 10k or something like that and uh, there are a lot of benefits to mile repeats um, it's a great way to build stamina and speed 
It improves your body's ability to carry oxygen to the muscles, uh, which is essential in longer races and, and going fast. And it also helps develop uh, your running economy and it improves your running economy, which will make you a more efficient and faster runner as a result. Um, and, you know, I would say make sure to give yourself plenty of rest so that you're, you feel uh, pretty much fully recovered before going to the next one so that you're really um, training your body at that faster pace to, um, yeah, just to be fully recovered so you go into the next one, you can smash the next one just like the last and keep your running economy up. Um, so the reason I love my repeats is, first of all, it's just, uh, you get to go fast. <laughs> I like going fast, <laughs> to, to be simplistic here. Um, and uh, it's just a, it's a very rewarding workout because, uh, you know, it's, it takes a hard effort, but when you're done, it feels really good to be done. So a lot of confidence there. Um, I would say that if you have a, a, a training partner, it's great to do mile repeats with a training partner because you guys can share pacing duties. So for one rep, you get, you can have someone pace the whole thing and then the next, the other, and you can alternate pacing jobs. So it's, it makes it a lot easier when you're just behind someone focusing on their back rather than having to worry about hitting exact times every single rep. So uh, I would recommend doing that. And um, the last reason I really like mile repeats is it gets you accustomed to a harder pace and really prepares you well for a 5K because if you do four, if you do say five mile repeats at your 5K race pace, that means you've done like two miles more than what the 5K distance is at your race pace, obviously with rest, but it's still, um, it's just huge confidence booster and I think it's a great prediction workout for how a 5K is gonna go. If you can get, if you could start a little slower than your race pace and go below that race pace, it's, I think it's very easy, uh, easily accomplishable for you to reach your goals in that 5k. Um, so that is the second workout I would recommend to you guys and I found it to be super critical in um, developing my speed uh, and a training block. So the third key workout in developing as a runner and becoming a faster runner is uh, 1k repeats and specifically I would say uh, shoot for around 6 to 10 1k repeats uh, depending on which place you are in your training so earlier in I would shoot more for five to six but if you're later into a training block I would shoot more for uh, six to eight uh, preferably probably seven or eight um, because just the more you do the better the more you'll be prepared for um, the future and also if you're feeling crazy you can do upwards of 10 uh, which I've done before as well so uh, with regards to pacing guys uh, this is going to be a, a decently hard effort similar in pacing to the mile repeats I mentioned before um, so this is going to be right around your 5k pace maybe slightly faster um, I would I would say uh, probably shoot for faster than your 5k race pace for these um, or just right around it and then build down so uh, you know alternatively you could start them around 10k race pace and build it and make your way down to 5k race pace and a little bit faster than that if you want um, but for me, like I mentioned before, my 5K race pace, oops, sorry. <laughs> my 5K race pace is right around five minutes per mile, which converts to a 306 per kilometer. So I usually try to run my 1Ks in the range of 255 to 310 per kilometer, which is equivalent to 442 to 506 per mile. Uh, a typical repetition amount for me is eight. Uh, so as an example of a workout I would do, uh, for, I would do the first two two by one K at 305 to 310 pace, uh, then the next four by one K at three to 305, and then I would hover below that line uh, at 250 to three minute kilometer pace um, in, the, in the last two there. So I, I usually try to, like I did with my repeats, I start slower than that, the, you know, the normal pace, and then I go below it at the, by the end, so. Uh, 1K repeats have a lot of benefits that have been scientifically uh, backed by, you know, Jack Daniels running formula book and other books as well that I've read into. Um, and, and generally speaking, these are great in helping build your VO2 max, which is essentially your body's ability to uh, get oxygen in. It's really just a measurement of oxygen capacity, uh, or in other words, the amount of oxygen that a runner can utilize in a state of high intensity, like a race. Um, so the higher your VO2 max, the better your body will be able to utilize the oxygen entering the lungs. And this converts, this typically converts to a better performance in training and most importantly, uh, racing. So that's, that's one reason why I love them is I know that I'm improving my VO2 max, which is going to help me to become a faster runner and do better in races. Cause I can, I can, I know that I can, um, run at a fast pace and have my oxygen flowing through, uh, more efficiently. Um, 
And so that's one of the reasons. Another reason is they're really quick to do and they just feel really good to go at that pace. You know, you're, you're putting in a hard effort and you, you feel like you're really putting in the work to become a better runner. Uh, I, would, I would say don't go overboard with this, just hit the paces and, and that's what's important. The consistency is what matters. Um, so this really, these type of workouts really give me a lot of confidence for uh, from the mile up to the 8K, uh, 8K for cross country season. I, I like to do the 8 by one k sort of a prediction workout of what I think I can do. Um, and it's honestly just a classic go-to workout when you don't really know what to do because uh, it's just a really beneficial workout. And um, with regards to uh, the rest periods on these, I would say close do uh, somewhere between 75 seconds rest and 90 seconds rest um, so that you're fully recovered for the next one. Alternatively, um, you can treat this a little differently and uh, do little float or jog recoveries in between each so that you keep running uh, if you don't like stopping after each rep. Um, I usually just do a little bit of a walk in the 75 second to 90 second rest uh, between each. Um, but yeah, uh, those are the three key workouts that I, I find essential in becoming a better runner and I've, I found them to be really beneficial for me and helping me to you know reach my goals um, in a training block. And the last one I'll mention here, I'm not really going to talk much about it, but fart licks uh, are another great workout, especially in the beginning of a training block. It's just, it's not going to overwork you. Um, it's, it's, it should feel like not too difficult by the time you finish, but, but you are getting uh, faster paces in there. So, you know, really what it is, is just uh, an example would be eight by one on one off where your ons are at a harder effort. You don't even really need to look at pace here. It's just what feels hard to you in the given period of time and then the offs are just a jog recovery so you, you're ready for the next on. Um, and so you just go back and forth. It's Farlick's also known as speed play, so it's really just playing a little bit with speed in a normal run. You usually just do it in an easy run or something like that and you just incorporate it into the middle. Uh, so that's, my, that's an honorable mention of mine um, that I, I really like doing in the beginning of a training block um, before getting into anything a little bit more intense. So yeah, guys, I would say that uh, just to just to overview, we have a five to eight mile tempo or lactate threshold workout. We have four to six mile repeats, and we have the eight by one k, the one k repeats as well. Um, and with all three of these, I think that you guys can become a lot faster and really see huge, uh, big improvements in um, your running efficiency, your running economy, and uh, most importantly, your times in, in races. You'll I think you'll see a lot of improvement there as well. Um, so if you guys like this video, uh, be sure to um, like and subscribe and uh, share it around with your friends if, if you think uh, you know other your, your other running friends could benefit from seeing this. And yeah, I hope it was an informative video that helped you guys out. And uh, if, if it was, that's great. Uh, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Peace.